Good evening. It's uh, currently July 9th, 2024. The time is 5.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I just received uh, the final confirmations for a word that the Lord gave me. He wants this word titled Hasty Speech. Um, but before I start, he wants me to read this Bible verse to all of you. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt, water, and fresh. That's James 3.16-13 to 13 in the New King James Version. Again, before any word, I don't expect you to just take my word for it. We are to test every spirit. That means that you're going to take this back to the Holy Spirit and ask him to confirm or deny this word. You can also take this back to God, the one true living God, Emmanuel, God with us, in your own personal prayer time or when you're meditating on the word. And he will confirm or deny whether or not this came from him. And even go as far as to explain to you how you can benefit from heeding it. This is what the Lord said. Put a guard on your mouth. Have you no fear of me that you would speak such careless words? Have I not told you life and death are in the power of your tongue? On your tongue is a world of iniquity, igniting the very fires of hell. With the same mouth you bless and curse, this should not be. Be forewarned. That chastisement will be severe when you speak against my anointed. I have been lenient and very patient with those of you who are growing in this area. But if you know it is a problem for you, remind yourselves what is written about such behavior. I am not pleased with the amount of tail-bearing and gossip that has infiltrated my church. Did I not say that love fulfills the law? Where is the love for your brother? Where is the love for your sister? Many of you are passing judgment on someone based on what you heard about them. Their character has become tainted because you came into agreement with such accusations. Have you sought me about this? Or shall you trust your own judgment? I have warned you about how deceitful and wicked your hearts are. So why are you trusting them to only lead you astray? Wherever strife and division are present, evil is at work. And yet you turn on yourselves instead of fighting the real enemy. Many of my sheep have been scattered because at the onset of a threat, they began fighting amongst themselves. Instead of uniting in prayer, a house divided against itself will always fall. Have you forgotten who the enemy is? Why are you chasing away my flock? I said to judge righteously among the brethren. This does mean to judge this does not mean to judge from your flesh or a carnal perspective. You are not to judge people based on your opinion. 
You should be seeking me in all things, including how to handle such problems. So why have I not heard from you? If your wisdom is foolishness, why are you trusting in it for discernment? Discernment has nothing to do with feelings or emotions. It is not an inner knowing. It comes from my spirit. Many of you are struggling with this. You are either second guessing my words, wary of prophecy altogether, or being ruled by your feelings and opinions and calling it discernment. I have told you my ways are higher than the heavens. They are unsearchable. You cannot find them out. However, pride will cause you to think you know what is my will and what is not. Who has given you the idea that my will comes without suffering? Who has bewitched you into thinking my will comes easily and that opposition is a sure sign? It wasn't from me. Have I not said that you must be purified through fire? Do you think my children shall come forth as gold without suffering, without affliction, without trouble and without adversity? Is not the narrow road difficult? It is the broad road that is easy. How shall you handle persecution if you are not taught mercy, patience, and compassion? How shall you persevere if not challenged? What glory can come from a life without testimony? You overcome by my blood and the word of your testimony. How shall they believe they can overcome if you never had, had to? Sorry. How shall they appreciate grace in all its forms, if not struck by hardship and calamity? How would they learn thankfulness without going through times of abasing and abounding, or patience unless inconvenienced? Where in my word does it say that my will comes without suffering or trouble of any kind? Again, idle speech will not be tolerated. I have seen enough of it. Learn to season your words with grace or do not speak. There is a time to be silent and a time to speak. Discernment is knowing when that is and exercising that knowledge. If you are concerned, take your concerns to me. Ask my spirit to counsel you on how to handle the problem when it comes. And make sure that you are not the problem. Pointing fingers is a spirit of blame and accusation. Take the board out of your own eye before you point out the plank in your brothers. Humble yourselves under my mighty hand. Admit your wrongs. Confess them. And I will receive you with open arms. But if you continue to be hasty with your speech... I will not spare the rod, says the Lord of hosts, the first and the last, the faithful and true. These are the following confirmations that the Lord gave me shortly after. Exodus 12, 24. And you shall observe these things as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. Exodus 17, 2. Just these words. Why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? Proverbs twenty-seven twenty-three. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. Proverbs 26, verses 21 to 27. As charcoal is to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man. To kindle strife. The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the inmost body. Fervent lips with a wicked heart are like earthenware covered with silver dross. He who hates disguises it with his lips, 
and lays up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Through, though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. Proverbs 29.20 20. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Proverbs 29, 9 and 11. If a wise man contends with a foolish man, whether the fool rages or laughs, there is no peace. Verse 11. A fool vents all his feelings. A wise man holds them back. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 12 to 14. There is a generation that is pure in its own eyes yet is not washed from its filthiness. Verse 13, There is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords, and whose fangs are like knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. Proverbs 30, 32. If you have been foolish in exalting yourself, or if you have devised evil, put your hand on your mouth. Ezekiel 33, 32 to 33. Indeed you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. Verse 33, and when this comes to pass, surely it will, surely it will come. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them.